It's good to be here. Last week I was uh, not here on Sabbath. I was up in uh, in Townsville. I was uh, listening into a very powerful sermon by Uncle T. Uh, that was uh, really a good sermon. It really wakes us up to be faithful uh, people, stewards of God regarding uh, his calling. And uh, this week I'm fortunate to be blessed and uh, be around the family this week before uh, traveling again next week to Mount Isa. Anybody from Mount Isa here? Uh, no one from Mount Isa. So I will be traveling up to Mount Isa and the various places I've been to, we, I'm blessed to see new faces and new people and experience the weather and the culture of the place I travel to, so it's a, a blessing to be there. Sometimes when you spend a, a weekend, I, sometimes I choose to go to the local church and it's always a blessing to go and meet up with the church family. But this Sabbath, I'm glad that I'm here and we thank the elders for putting my name up in the roster. And this week has been a blessed week for our young people. For this week, we are spending the week of prayer together with our young ones on uh, Zoom. And what a uh, challenging time we spent on Zoom over every evening, uh, studying and sharing from the Word of God. And we thank uh, all the presenters who have presented uh, so far. And today is, uh, I think, the eighth topic that I will uh, want to share with you from the youth's uh, prayer meeting um, document. And we will touch on that before they will close tomorrow on topic number eight. It is uh, quite a journey because what we have learned this week are real issues that touch people's lives. Not only those who do not know God, but also for us that we worship and have faith in God are also touched by the same issues that are facing them. But the the message this week is that although we share the same burden, but we must go and share the hope we know. That was the crunch of the message this week. And so I would like to go to our topic for this week. And it says... Uh, so up in the... In the cities, we must show ourselves in the cities. We must not uh, stay in the comfort of our homes and places that we always go to every day after work, that we sleep in. We must show ourselves in the city that we live in. Um, Tala Wame was asking, how many people are here in Brisbane City? How many do you think? Any numbers? Uh, Mele? Don't know? Oh, how many? Yeah, about a uh, little bit more than two million. So two million, a little bit more than two million people lives in uh, Brisbane City and uh, I think Pastor Brett when he came once here he said the ratio of Adventist to the two million people here in Brisbane was quite low, was zero point something I think. So there's a very uh, big task for us to reach those of our friends and families who are here in uh, Brisbane. 
And uh, the subtitle of our topic uh, this morning says, Facing Fear in uh, Your City. Do you live in fear in Brisbane? No, no not really. Eh? Inala? All good in Inala? All right. We heard that Inala was a bad place to live. Oh, it's not. All right. All right. Inala is not a bad place. I look at the stats from uh, the local council. It says Brisbane is one of the best places to live in Australia. So not much like in Fiji. In Fiji, we, uh, although Fiji, we say it is the place to be, but sometimes we have a uh, uh, window, the bars, eh? and grills on the windows and the doors. Eh? So I don't know what uh, they're afraid of in Fiji, probably the... Yeah, not in Cook Islands? You have bars and grills on the doors? No? All right. You'll probably see it in Fiji if you go to Fiji, the bars and grills. Uh, but living in uh, cities is... Um, pretty scary, and that's what uh, uh, we will be touching on uh, this morning. And uh, cities are one of the places that we always go to, to uh, in terms of uh, technology. I was little, I was probably in class eight, after class eight, uh, we have to move to the big cities of, of uh, Vitilevu, Suba. So I left the island in the cargo boat going back to, to the big islands where the high school and, and the city is. So I never thought that, uh, I thought, oh, I'm good, I'm traveling to Suba. Suba is nice, there's cars, there's... Uh, lights, there's money, there's uh, big houses that I can enjoy. But after I spend sometimes reading the um, prayer document for this week, if I had known that these are the problems in the city, I might tell my dad I don't want to go to the city. There's a lot of problems that, I've, that we looked at this week that are faced by the city dwellers. And uh, we go to the city, of course, because of these uh, things up there. We go for higher education. We go for the technological advance in uh, probably the medical uh, areas. We go because there is a lot of money in the city. There is no money in the village. Probably not, uh, Taltala will not agree. He's got a cassava patch at, uh, back in uh, home, Taltala. There's politics, there's culture, there's business, there's entertainment. Everything that you want to go to is there in the big cities. So these are the attractions in uh, the cities we have today. Uh, we have mega cities today, like in uh, Japan, in India, uh, China. A lot of big cities with a lot of things that are happening in the city. But city is not only for buildings and places. City is much more than the physical imprint on a map. It is where we see many different cultures and people living in the city. If you haven't seen uh, Back in the village where I come from, there is no uh, relative from uh, uh, Rotuma. There is no relative from India there. We are by ourselves. But when you come to Suba, there is a lot of people. You see Rotumans, Indian, Chinese. And when we come from the village to Suba, the first time we tend to stare at, at the people who are, live there. Their faces are new to us. But city is where the people is, cities are where the people are, and that is where our mission are. We must show up in uh, the cities. In the Bible there are also, you know, in the Bible there are also cities of the Bible, right? Back in those times there were 
cities, Jerusalem, uh, Babylon, Bethlehem, Nineveh, uh, and uh, the cities of the plains called Zodom and Gomorrah. Uh, we know the stories of what happened in the cities of the plain. Uh, there are a lot of other cities that are named in the Bible, and you can read about the, what the bad things about uh, living in the cities. But uh, as you go through the Bible and look at the stories from the cities, we thank God uh, that he is still concerned about people who are living in the City is just like you and myself. We're living in Brisbane City. You are not uh, here by chance. You're here by the grace of God because God has a calling for you and me to the city of uh, Brisbane. Sometimes ago we said the story, I think uh, Sabbath School mission story about uh, a group of young people in uh, UK, in London, they fed the homeless and the poor there for 31 years. They have been feeding the poor and the homeless. Just like what we did here in Woodridge every second week of the month. And, uh, well, in the cities of the Bible, you will read uh, the difficulties that were faced by people of God uh, in those cities. And likewise, we have problems that are in the, the cities that we live in, and we've covered some of this problem this, this week. The problem in the cities, loneliness. I think that was covered by Total, uh, Total One. Loneliness. You can live in a city of two million people, but you are still lonely. Is that true? Because nobody comes and visits you. Nobody is your relative. Nobody is your friend. And that is where God is calling us. Uh, last time I did share a story on my sermon about a person who lived in Victoria. He died for so many weeks until probably about a month later then they found out that that person is dead alone in the big city of Victoria, almost probably three million, four million people living there. This person died alone in his place. Nobody cares. So you can be still lonely in a city of 2.5 million people like Brisbane. You can still face depression. We started this week. Even though you live in a city where medical uh, technology has advanced uh, so well, but you still have depression. You live in a city and you still have illnesses. You can live in a city and you're still uh, hopeless. And that what uh, faces the city dwellers, and unfortunately, we covered this week that also people of God like you and me are also in the same situation. You don't know, maybe a friend of yours from church might be crying in her house at the very moment we are sitting here. Nobody has visited her or him. So we are faced in the same dilemma as other people's are. But through the problems, through the dilemmas we have, we were touching in our Sabbath school this morning, that we who have faith and hope in God still have hope. One of the problems that we face in the city that we'll cover this morning is called, uh, it's not like, very good up there. What's the word? Fear. Fear. So I was, I was asking uh, the question earlier on, do you fear living in Brisbane? 
not so much as like living in Fiji, probably, or other places around the world. In the Gaza at the moment, they live in fear because of the war that's going on. Ukraine, uh, people of faith live in fear because of what is happening in, uh, around the country of Ukraine. Other places, they live in fear of their lives because of the crime. I was going to work and listening to the ABC News this week. Uh, they said the DPP report uh, re uh, registered an increase in the crime rate by 20% the last year. And you know the crime rate? was conducted by people, by young people of 15, 16, 17 year olds. Uh, so those are very alarming figures. So people live in fear in the, in the big uh, cities. One uh, famous person, do you know this person? Who's uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt? Uh, what, uh, Mr. S? former president of the United States of America made this quite uh, profound uh, statement when he was elected president back in the 1933 he was elected president and there was a, a problem going on in America and he says this in one of his maiden speech he said the only thing we have to fear is what is fear itself. In other words, he is saying the problem is not economy. The problem is that we fear to do something about it. That is the problem. So, frankly, Franklin Roosevelt was one of the great leader of the United States of America that brought back uh, America to where it is today. Fear is something that we have uh, to go through in our life. One of the Cuban psychologists by the name of uh, Myra Y. Lopez says, describe fear as a monster that shivers, sends shivers down your Spine, have you come across this type of fear? Get scared? No? Uh, you guys are very tough. And Duru? I know once in, uh, when I was, uh, Alice grew up in the village, and um, I think I've told this story before. I stayed at the uh, one end of the village, my tutu and bumbu at the other end of the village and in the middle of the village is our big church and on that big church is uh, is on piles with uh, higher columns and if you cross that church in the night that place is always dark and so if i sent by my dad to take food from my end of the village to my tutu and bumbu at the end of the village, as soon as I reach the church, I'll uh, hold on the plate nicely. And then I'll do a 100 meter dash. Why? I actually fear of the darkness on that church underneath the church. And sometimes we have that fear in us eh, that just shivers down our spine as uh, what the Cuban psychologist uh, says. Fear can control us to the point where we become uh, irrational. The normal things that we need to do, we don't do it any, anymore because of the fear that uh, we have in us. So we become irrational in what we have to do. The good things that we need to do, the normal things that we need to do, we didn't do it because we fear of something in our life. 
And these are the causes of fear that normally arise in the big uh, cities. Crime. I bet if you go and look at the stats of crimes in the big cities, the crimes will not go down in the stats. It will still, it will continue to rise. So crime is a big uh, thing in the big cities that we live in. Uh, corruption. Do we have corruption today? Where can you find corruption the most? Huh? In the uh, in the parliament, no, nobody's listening from parliament. In the parliament, the politicians, huh? uh, probably uh, not so much in the Cook Island, but uh, ah yes, oh, okay, don't mention it. Corruption is one of the big thing that uh, you know. We have uh, we have learned to have faith in the institution that are there to serve us. But sometimes the corruption that going on here makes us fear to even go and ask for assistance, especially back home. The urban violence by young children nowadays are rampant in the big cities. And uh, the news, the news that are shared by uh, news people nowadays are very much bad news that creates uh, fear in uh, the community. So fear is something that will steal your thoughts and can hijack your dreams and willpower. Fear makes you forget what you know and lose sight of who you are. Fear makes you feel out of control and that you can never regain it. Fear can make you distrust the very people you should trust without hesitation. Fear is something that can make you demanding rather than humble and serving. Fear is something that makes you think that God is insignificant in the face of your problems and challenges. Fear is something that makes you search in people for what you can only find in Jesus Christ. So fear can really change our lives. Do you think? Yes. If you live in fear, these are the things that can happen in our life. But we are reminded, uh, and the Bible also says in Luke 21 uh, verse 26, People will be fainting from fear. What's the Fijian word for fainting? Huh? Matambuto? Matambuto, Rembo, So fear can make you faint, the Bible says. Faint from the expectation of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The fear of lightning. Uh, what do you fear of? You fear of uh, rats, oh, spiders, cockroaches. These are little things that make us fear. Snakes. Well, God is saying here, those little things can make you faint, mistress. Because you have fear in your, in your life. Is there a solution? That's the question that we are trying to answer to this morning. Overcoming fear. Is there a solution to something as overwhelming as fear? You know, when Pastor Brett was... Uh, preaching here back some times ago, 2021, he says that he fear uh, height. What do you call that fear? Uh, huh? Fear of heights. What's the word for it, Auntie Mil? Don't know? All right. So is there a solution to your fear? 
Can we overcome our fear? Like me was fearing that darkness, but now I no longer fear the darkness. Is it possible to live without fear? Is it possible? Yes, I think it's possible. By the grace of God, you can overcome your fear. But fear is something that drives us to this. It drives us to go to therapies. It drives us to go to psychologists. It drives us to take uh, tablets and medications. Do you agree? Yeah. The fear of depression. What uh, tablet are you using, teenager? Uh, ashwagandha. Uh, the fear of depression drives Tinaicha to. Oh, it's a vegan, uh, vegan drug. So the fear that always accompanies us drives us to go to our doctors, drives us to go to our psychologists, to our friends, to our relatives, and even to take uh, medication just because we have fear. Fear brings loneliness, depression, hopelessness, and that drives us to go to these people or take uh, medication. But what does the Bible say about the solution to fear? Anybody guess? What's the solution to fear, Zach? This is the solution to fear. Amen? Amen. That is the divine solution for fear. Church members and church family. If you don't have faith, you'll still be fearing things in your life. But if you have faith, that will drive away fear in your life. So when we talk about faith, let's not take it lightly. Let's take it seriously because faith is the antidote to eliminate all our fears. Even loneliness, hopelessness, or whatever that we have discussed this week. If you have faith in God, that will drive out all the fears that we have. And we thank God that he always have a solution to everything. So whatever you are fearing of, learn to have faith and trust in God. This is, I'm not talking about the faith that when the worry comes, it drives out your faith. I'm talking about the faith uh, like those Hebrew boys. When the fire was heated about seven times, they still have faith. That's the kind of faith that we are talking about here. Not just a relative faith, but serious, deep faith in God. When there is men with guns or men with fires hit it seven times just like the Hebrew boys they said king even if we die we will never bow down that's the kind of faith that we are talking about here that is the antidote to eliminate all fears that we have in Hebrew 11 1 says Faith is our confidence in what we hope for. Confidence and trust in God when we are faced with hopelessness, when we are faced with depression. Faith is our confidence in God. Assurance about what we do not see. When we have faith, God uh, will assure 
that uh, he will take care of you, just like those Hebrew boys. So faith is something that we should not take it lightly. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, sorry for that uh, not so clear. Matthew 17, 20 says, even if our faith is as little as a mustard seed, probably just like that big, you can say to the mountain to move, the mountain will move. Whatever mountain of a problem you have, when you have faith, that problem will move away. When you have faith in God. Whatever sickness you have, whatever problem you have, whatever hopelessness the situation may be, a little faith is all you need. And that is the solution that will solve your problem. Our faith can move mountains because God, we are having faith in a God who created this universe. He can say, move that mountain, that mountain will move through your faith in him. He says in Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. Even I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Have faith in God. Don't be afraid. When you have faith, whatever you might face in life, uh, God will take care of it for you. Hebrew 11.6 says, uh, without faith, it is impossible to? Amen. It says earlier that faith will move mountains. Without faith, and then may please God our masu. When we don't have prayer, pray to God in faith, your prayer and my prayer will not please God. God will only be pleased if we have that little faith in us. That faith is what pleases God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he, sometimes when we talk about faith, we don't believe that God exists, yeah? We just, have, we just say, yeah, I believe in God, but we did not really mean that God exists. Because why? The moment we run out of money in our pocket, we look around for one, uh, what do you call them in Fiji? Manlenda, is that faith in God? No. As soon as we are hit by a serious sickness, we don't go to God. We look for the Nrkagu. Or what do you call the people who do it, right? Is that uh, faith in God? No, 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 that's not faith in God. When you are hit with the real problem like uh, Job in the Bible. Where did Job go to? He still thank God. I lost only one child. Job lost how many? Seven or ten. The whole children wiped out. Jesus, uh, Job was still having faith in, in God. When there are problems, difficulties that you face in life, uh, don't go running to somebody else. Seek God first. In faith, you will see what God uh, will do. We must believe that God uh, exists, and not only that, he says, he rewards those who earnestly seek him. 
your faith, if you have that faith, that God exists, pray to him earnestly and trust him with all your might. He said, I will reward your faith. Because he will take care of the problems that you have. So, oops, sorry, Uncle Son. Not just any kind of faith overcomes fear. The faith that truly conquers fear first accepts the existence of God. Amen? We must accept, just like that verse, that God exists. That God is not a mystery in your faith. God is not uh, something that is a go-to person in case of illness, in case of trouble. God is the go-to person or go-to uh, God uh, in every facet of your life. Whether you are happy, you are sad, more money, no money, whether you stay in the city or stay in the rural area, always trust and have faith in God. It says as we move on, the statement from uh, the youth's uh, prayer meeting, those who believe in God have a compass that guides them through, through the difficulties of this world. I was in uh, Japan uh, back in the 90s. And uh, when I turned on the TV and uh, the news came, a uh, big businessman jumped onto the train track. You know, in Japan, they are not uh, like our train here. Uh, these trains are slow train. In Japan, they call it the bullet train. they more like uh, the speed of the bullet. That's what they call them. And when that train was coming at that uh, bullet speed, this gentleman jumped onto the track. We cannot, they cannot see his body parts just fragmentized into small pieces. Because people who don't have hope in God uh, have not a compass to guide them. But those who believe in God, uh, they have a compass that guides them through the difficulties. When the, hit, when the difficulties hit you, you know where to go because you have faith in God. Those who do not believe and have faith in God says uh, this world can be a strange place to live. This world can be a confusing and discouraging place to live and that's why people take their lives. Life becomes complicated and directionless if we don't have uh, faith uh, in uh, God. As we move on this morning, it says, faith that overcomes fear not only accepts God's, uh, accepts the existence of God, but also seeks to develop a special relationship with Him. That's what I'm saying, that's why I'm saying that we do not only go to God because we face difficulty. We must have a relationship with God on a daily basis. When he, you have that relationship with him on a daily basis, that will build up your faith and build up my faith to face the situation that we face and discuss this, this week. The Bible says, that we must have a relationship with God by knowing him. In Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24, this is what the Lord says, Do not, don't let the wise boast in their wisdom or the powerful boast in their power, 
or the rich boast in their riches, but those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord. So the Lord is calling us not only to come to him in times of trouble, but he is asking us to truly know him. Truly know him means spending time with him. And that is means spending time with God daily through his word, through prayers, and whatever it can build up your faith in God. Who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth and that I delight in these things, I, the Lord, uh, have uh, spoken. So that is also one requirement that will drive away fear. Know that God exists. And secondly, we need to have a relationship with God. And the third point, which is, I think, the last point this morning, it says that the faith that overcomes fear not only accepts the existence of God, but also, oh, sorry, is that the previous one? The faith that overcomes fear is one that leads us to trust God completely. Total trust in God. When the disciples were in the Lake uh, Gennesaret, when there was wild winds and rough seas, what were they saying? They were running around and they end up waking up Jesus who was sleeping on the boat. And when Jesus woke up from his sleep, what did he say to the disciples? You men of little faith. We must trust God uh, totally if we are to drive out uh, the fear in us. Because God, uh, when we have faith, total trust in God, uh, God uh, will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. When we get sick, we cannot heal ourselves. We'll seek a doctor. When we are faced with other hopeless situations, we cannot fix it. But God uh, will fix it for you. The essence of true faith involves uh, taking God's word and trusting that he will fulfill his promise. I think Tamaya Lesi was... Uh, uh, pointing that out in the study yesterday. We need to believe and take the word of God uh, seriously. When God says Sabbath is holy, we must keep it holy. We must seriously take uh, the word of God. Because our faith uh, Builds when we take the word of God seriously. It's not something that we, it's like a novel that we read and forget. Or like the Fiji Times, we just read for the story and forget about it. But the reminder for this week, young people especially, take the word of God seriously in your life. That will build you up your faith to face the problem and issues in life. Proverbs, oh, sorry, Uncle Son. I keep pressing the wrong button. Proverbs 2, 1 to 6 says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver 
and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. And find the knowledge of God, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and uh, take the word of God seriously. When you take the word of God seriously, then you will understand what the fear of God is. Because he will give you discernment, he will give you wisdom, he will give you knowledge and understanding that the world is searching for. He will bless you immensely. By trusting that everything is in the hands of our creator, we live without fear. Knowing that nothing happens without his uh, consent. When we have faith in God, our problems are not taken away, right? Job's problems were not taken away, even though he had faith in God. David's problem were not taken away, even though he had faith in God. Deep faith. Our problems will not go away. Problems will come, but trusting God, the creator, will take out the fear in us about the problems we are facing. This lady, did you come through the story of this lady any time in your life? Harriet Tubman. That was not, that was not her real name, but uh, Harriet was her mother's name, and Tubman was her husband's name. So he chose to have this name. And uh, this young lady, an uh, African-American, she grew up in uh, America, in South America. And uh, she grew up during the slave trade time. So she was a slave in uh, America. And you know, if you live in America during the slave age, it was a nightmare for a young girl like her. But during uh, that time, imagine if you are trapped, your freedom taken away, and you are living in constant fear. That's what this young lady was experiencing when she was a child growing up in slavery. And uh, from a very young age, she knows what cruelty in slavery is. But as she grew, her determination also grew and her determination to escape the slavery to help others was his motive every day of her life and you know what her secret is what's her secret mistress samodiko mistress awala na busingali what's her secret her secret is what we talked about this morning faith in God. That's what her secret, her powerful faith encourages her to, when she was about 27 years old, she made the brave decision to escape slavery. And so he took uh, the journey up north escaping those very people who are trying to hunt her down, the slave traders. They hunt for these little girls to be sold to slavery. She escapes slave, slave traders. She escapes the slaves' dog who are always on the loose to find uh, people who escape. So he, she escapes all this by trying to go and secure her freedom. And when she achieved uh, that freedom, you know what she did? 
she came back to the very place that she that took away her freedom. You know, how many people he managed to help to escape slavery? About uh, 300 more African American who were slaves like her. She helped her help them escape the slave trade. So she was known as Moses of their time, who led uh, the people out of Egypt. So he led uh, her people out uh, of slavery. Because of what? Because of her faith in God. Her faith in God removes that fear away and helps her to go and helps her to come back to the very same place that she was held captive. Nothing else can do that but her faith in God. And I hope uh, the story of Harriet will also remind us and encourage us that we, if we need to eliminate and drive away the fear that is in us, we must totally trust and have faith in God. And our last text for the morning, in 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, For God uh, did not give us a spirit of uh, fear, but of power and love and self-control. That is the beauty of serving God. He provides for you, he looks after you, and uh, he gives you the spirit to take away the fear that is in you. May God bless us. O oh, gracious and merciful Father in heaven, we again thank you, Lord, for the blessing of your word shared with us this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you are our God. And we thank you, Lord, that you will always take care of the people who trust in you. And Lord, uh, help us to have that deep trust and faith completely in you. And we thank you, Lord, that you have challenged us with your word this morning. And help us, Lord, to stay faithful to you always, whatever may come. Please bless us as we dismiss from your house. And Lord, be with us through your Sabbath day. In Jesus' name we pray.